say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled the land of the free and the home of the brave. Good morning, everyone. Today on Veterans Day, we honor those who honored our country with its highest form of service. You who once wore the uniform of our Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard. We owe you our thanks, we owe you our respect, and we owe you our freedom. We come together to express our profound gratitude for the sacrifices and contributions that you and your family made on the battlefield, at home, and at outposts around the world. But America's gratitude to our veterans is something always grounded in something greater than what you did on duty. It's also an appreciation of the example that you continue to set after your service has ended, your example of citizens. Veterans Day often follows a hard fought political campaign, an exercise in the free speech and self-government that you fought for. It often highlights disagreements across our nation, but the American instinct has never been to find isolation in opposing corners. It is to find strength in our common fundamental truths, to forge unity from our great diversity, to sustain that strength and unity even when it is hard. And when the election is over, as we search for ways to come together, to reconnect with one another and with the principles that are more enduring than politics, some of our best examples are the men and women we salute on Veterans Day. Today, people are gathering all across America, not only to express thanks of a grateful nation, but to tell stories that demand to be told. They're stories of wars whose names have come to define eras, battles that echo throughout history, they're stories of patriots who sacrificed in the pursuit of a more perfect union. They're the stories of generations of Americans who left home as boys and girls, became men and women, and returned home as heroes. And when these Americans who had dedicated their lives to defending this country came home, many settled on a life of service, choosing to make their entire lives a tour of duty. Many chose to live a quiet life, trading one uniform and set of responsibilities for another doctor, engineer, teacher, mother, father. Some put away their medals, stayed humbled about their service, and moved on. Some, carrying shrapnel and scars, found that they could. We call this a holiday, but for many veterans, it's another day of memories that drive them to live their lives each day as best as they possibly can. For our troops, it is another day in harm's way. For their families, it is another day to feel the absence of a loved one. For our wounded warriors, it is another day of slow and difficult recovery. So while it is important and proper that we mark this day, it is far more important we spend all our days determined to keep the promises that we've made to all who answer this country's call. So to all of you, I'm wishing you a very respectful and honored Veterans Day. Helping us present the distinguished honors on this Veterans Day are our Badger State girls and boys. Macy Cleesby, Emma Fiedler, Talbot Stites, and Connor Lubick. Oh, 
A spirit of liberty and patriotism animates all degrees and nominations of men, said James Madison, one of our founding fathers. Disappointingly, I think few people today have a spirit of liberty and patriotism. I think patriotism means respecting the national anthem, flying the flag, and voting. I believe that respecting the national anthem is highly important to being patriotic. To respect the anthem, I think everyone who's able should always stand while it is being played and put their hand over their heart. Respecting the Star Spangled Banner represents the people who built this country, as well as the people who fought wars to keep the country free. If we sing it before every professional sport, it must be important. Respecting the national anthem is highly important in my eyes. The American flag is also important to be a patriot in my eyes. The United States flag has 13 stripes, 7 red and 6 white, one for each of the 13 colonies. The 50 stars represent each of the 50 states. You should not just fly any flag. If it is faded or tattered, it is disrespectful. If it is faded or tattered, you should also not just throw it away. You need to fold it up in a special way, each fold meaning something. Then you light it on fire. I consider flying the flag highly important to being a patriot. I believe that voting is a large part of patriotism too. I think that you need to know the truth before you vote. You should vote for who or what you think would be best for our country, based on the facts, no matter what anyone else tells you to, to vote for. Voting is what this country was made for. I think voting is extremely important to being a patriot. I think that to be a patriot, you should, among other things, fly the U.S. flag, respect the Star Spangled Banner, and vote during elections. There are hundreds of ways you could be patriotic to this country. If you wanted to be very patriotic, you could run for a government office. But of all the things you could do, I think these three are some of the most important. What is freedom, what is liberty, and what is justice? We know that we're promised these things, but we don't always understand what they mean. It's easy to take these virtues for granted and forget the costs. But for veterans, the costs are much more apparent, and these virtues are what they live by. It's not a guarantee. It's their job to ensure these virtues for the rest of us. November 11th signifies more than just a day in 1918 that marks the end of violence of World War I when Germany and allied forces put into an armistice into effect. Veterans Day symbolizes a day where we, where we honor veterans past and present. Why do, we, why do we celebrate Veterans Day? We celebrate Veterans Day to put our freedoms into perspective and honor the bravery and sacrifice of the men and women that protect them. Our military members don't choose their job to be glorified. They do it for the United States of America and all the people that reside within. Ultimately, Veterans Day is a way to remind us all of the sacrifice that these men and women make and to thank them for protecting our liberties. Honoring Veterans Day is not confined to one day though. So every time you use your freedoms, remember the men and the women that are making it possible for you to live in the greatest country in the world. Hi, I'm Emma Fiedler, the Badger Girls State Representative from Prescott High School. And I'm Connor Lubick, the Badger Boys State Representative from Prescott High School. We will be reading the names of the Prescott area veterans to honor them today. The image on the screen was taken after the 2019 Veterans Day Assembly at Prescott High School, in which Teresa Anthony was the selected guest speaker. We would like to thank Marcus West for recording a speech and being our guest speaker in 2020. Starting off with the Korean War. Floyd Miller, Army National Guard, 1950 to 1959. Bernard Volker, U.S. Army, 1953 to 1955, France. Ernest Tromberg, U.S. Army, Korean War, 1953 to 1955. Vietnam era, Merlin Blaisdell, U.S. Army, 1968 to 1989. Served stateside and in Germany, 
Worked for the Veterans Office for Pierce and St. Croix Counties. Bill Bowen, U.S. Navy, 1968 to 1972, on Coral Sea Aircraft Carrier and Repost Hospital Ship. Terry Budworth, U.S. Army, 1961 to 1964. Harold Clement, Chief Master Sergeant, U.S. Air Force, retired 33 years of service. John Colhane. Tom Driscoll, U.S. Army, 3rd Division, 76 Artillery, 1962 to 1965 in Germany. Rick Edgecombe, U.S. Air Force, 1971 to 1978. Dave Finley, U.S. Army, Korea, 1953 to 1955, and U.S. Navy from 1955 to 1958. Dean Iberg, 1960 to 1964, Air Force, stationed Guam for 18 months and Louisiana for two years with the last 90 days in Vietnam. Job as a photographer with rank of Airman First Class. Norm Johnson, U.S. Army, 1962 to 1964. Roger Cleegan, U.S. Army Vietnam, 9th Infantry Recon, 1967, Unit 4 of 47th. Marvin Linseth. Army vet stationed in Germany in 1962 to 1965. Walt Matzik, U.S. Army, Vietnam, 1969 to 71, Sergeant Helicopter, Direct Support. Mike Meyer, Sr., Army Reserve, 1970 to 1997, in Honduras, Panama, and Guatemala. Fred Merkard, U.S. Army, Vietnam, Banmi Thou, 1966 to 1967, Military Intelligence. Bill Pahachik. Mike Riley, U.S. Army, 1972 to 1974, stationed in Korea. Neil Riley, U.S. Army from 1965 to 1969, Captain Vietnam, and then to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. John Roll Sr., U.S. Army from 1961 to 1964, and actively served in Germany during the Cuban Missile Crisis. John Schumer, U.S. Navy, 1968 to 1972, in 71 and 72 in Vietnam. Brad Setterin, U.S. Navy, 1969 to 1973 on USS Kepler. Grant Wolf, U.S. Army, Vietnam, 4th Infantry, bombed Ho Chi Minh Trail. Gary Zielinski, U.S. Army, Vietnam, Tour 2, 1969 and Tour 2, 1970 to 71. William Markert Sr., U.S. Air Force Special Ops SSG, 1965 to 1969. Wally Schmitz, U.S. Army, Vietnam, from 1968 to 1970. Richard Schulte, U.S. Army, Vietnam, 1970. Floyd Latat, Army National Guard, 1966 to 1967. Tom Bowden, Minnesota National Guard, 1966 to 1972. 1980s to present. Warren K. Anthony, First Sergeant, United States Army and Army National Guard. Alan Canfield, U.S. Army, 1982 to 85, Military Intelligence. Kevin Clement, U.S. Navy Petty Officer, Second Class, 1984 to 2009. Tyler Cole, U.S. Army, 2000 to 2015 to Iraq, Africa, and Middle East. Josh Dickey, U.S. Navy, 1997 to 2008, Kosovo. Kelly Dickey, U.S. Navy, 1997 to 1998, Kosovo. Aaron Eversman, U.S. Army, 2003 to 2007, Iraq deployment, 2005. Rob Glazerick, Sergeant Panama, 1989, Desert Storm, 1991, Iraq, 2007 and 2008, and then 2010 to 2011. Glenn Kraus, Specialist, Iraq, 2009 to 2010, and U.S. Army National Guard. Craig Lubick, Army National Guard, 1992 to 2002. Mike Meyer, Jr., Air Force, 1995 to 2015. Sean Morrison, U.S. Air Force, four years active duty, 1990 to 1994, served in Desert Storm, and 21 years working for the VA. Eric Oy, U.S. Navy, 1995 to 1999, stationed in Virginia on NAS Oceana Master Jet Base. Eric Olson, Marine Corps Corporal Infantry, Border Squad Leader, served in Iraq, 2000 to 2004. Paul Pfeiffer, Army 1980 to 1984. Mike Tomley, U.S. Navy 1988 to 1994, stationed on USS Sapin and USS Inchcon, part of Liberation Kuwait and Liberian Excursion. William Markert Jr., U.S. Army SSG Staff Sergeant, 2002 to 2010. David Peterson, U.S. US Army 
SFC Operation Iraqi Freedom 2004 to 2005. Marcus West, Lieutenant Colonel USAF, Air National Guard, 28 years of service and currently works as a C-130 instructor pilot in the 133rd Air Wing, Minnesota ANG, but retired in February 2020 after nearly 29 years. He completed six combat tours in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and Bosnia. Marcus is a 1991 PHS graduate. John Bensend, Iraq 2009 to 2010, U.S. Army and Wisconsin 128th Infantry Battalion National Guard in Afghanistan. Luke Benzend, Private First Class, U.S. Army, National Guard, Airborne Qualified. Dustin Kimber, Sergeant, U.S. Army, National Guard, Iraq, Veteran, 2009. And our active, and our active service member, Robert Mooney, Electronics Technician for Submarine Warfare. Happy Veterans Day to Prescott Schools. Veterans, administrators, faculty, and of course, students. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Marcus West. I retired from the military after nearly 29 years of service, and I grew up in the Prescott community, graduating in 1991. I also have two kids in the Prescott school system, Ethan and Broderick West. As a 29-year combat veteran with six combat deployments to Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and Bosnia, I've got a unique perspective on being a veteran. I'd like to talk to to you a little bit today about Veterans Day itself, its origins. I'd also like to talk to you about some of my own personal experiences in training and in combat. And then talk a little bit about patriotism to close things up. So I'll keep it short because I have to go to work myself very shortly. In 1918, there was an armistice for World War I, which means the, drop, the bomb stopped dropping. On that day, the 11th hour, the 11th day of the 11th month, World War I ended. With that end, they created a day called Armistice Day. That day was to celebrate all veterans of World War I because that was the war to end all wars. Fast forward 35 years from that moment, and we had a couple other wars that we had fought. We had World War II, and we had the Korean War. And with the combination of all those veterans, they decided that Armistice Day should become Veterans Day, so that we could celebrate all vets, not just World War I vets. And that's Veterans Day, plural. So there's no apostrophe in Veterans Day. It's plural, not possessive. Now, as we fast forward to today, we know that the country has been in a myriad of wars since 1918. And so we take Veterans Day very seriously. The United States takes its military service to its country very seriously, enough to enact a federal holiday. My own personal uh, stories. Uh, I could go on a lot longer than five or so minutes, but I want to specifically talk about SEER school. When you become a pilot in the military, you go through a survival school that simulates you being shot down. So imagine being shot down on the other side of the enemy lines and having to survive in the mountains by yourself without knowing when you're gonna be picked up. In this school, they actually bring you out to the mountains of Washington State. They give you some minor supplies and they bring you out in the woods and they teach you how to survive with nothing but a bare bones minimum of equipment. Something similar to what you would have if you bailed out with a pack and a chute out of your airplane. During this school, <clears throat> they teach us how to kill wild animals, how to drink river water, how to trudge through three to four feet of snow and land nav, navigate so that we can get somewhere to where the uh, friendly forces are. And after you spend a week in the woods, learn how to build fires to keep yourself alive and learning how to live alone, you learn a lot about yourself. A lot about 
having grit and having guts. And after that week in the woods, they round you up and they don't take you back to a nice warm pad. They bring you to an enemy resistance camp where they train you to resist as a prisoner of war in a setting similar to what we found in World War II in Vietnam. In that school, you spend three days having to use a coffee can for certain uh, things that you need to do physiologically. And you can't sleep. You have to be uh, standing up the whole time because the cell they put you in isn't big enough to lay down in. And when they do bring you out, they have you working in the camp. And they can beat you, and they can make your life really miserable. And this is training. Every single Air Force and military pilot goes through this school. When you go through that school, you learn a lot about yourself and a lot about patriotism. When I went through that school, I was young. I was in my 20s. So physically, we, I could handle that. But it wasn't the physical component of that school that sticks with me today. It's the mental component. Specifically, after you've completed it. After we had been bashed around for three days in the camp and a week out in the woods, when it was all over, when we turned around, what we were staring at was the American flag. And it teaches a little bit about patriotism. That story in itself right now is causing me an emotional experience. The American flag to a veteran means quite a bit. In fact, veterans have the ability to request a military funeral when they die. At that military funeral, that flag would be dra uh, draped over their casket one last time as it's brought up to be buried. And then that flag is taken off the casket and folded very deliberately, very slowly, so that it's perfect. And then it's presented to the family. When that flag is presented to the family, it is saluted one last time in an ever so slow salute because it will be the last salute. So when I think about patriotism and I think about Veterans Day and I think about our flag, those are the images that get implanted in my mind. So hopefully from this, you guys will take a little bit of a uh, patriot story and carry that with you today on Veterans Day. And when you see a vet, you'll thank him for his service and maybe, maybe you'll think into the future and think about your service to the great, greatest country on earth, the United States of America. And when I say think about your service, that means thinking about creating more for the country and your citizens than you take. Well, with that, I thank you and have a wonderful Veterans Day. composed by General Daniel Butterfield. 
It is played on a bugle and typically represents the mourning of someone. It hasn't always been portrayed as a sad melody, however, as it began as a military signal for soldiers to turn out the lights and go to bed. It was called extinguishing lights. However, it was eventually thought of as too formal sounding and is now used to honor members of the military that gave their lives serving the United States by paying the ultimate price. It is now heard at all funerals with military honors to symbolize the extinguishing of life.